Welcome back to the Oscar Project Podcast, the show where I discuss Oscar-nominated films year by year. I am your host, Jonathan Utreberg, and today I sit down with Vincent René Lorty, director of the Oscar-nominated short film, Invincible. Before I jump into the interview, please be sure to subscribe to the show in your podcast player so you can get all the newest episodes as soon as they are released. If you like the interview and want to hear more, please consider leaving a rating and review in Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Vincent René Lorty is the director of the short film Invincible, an ode to the memory of Marc-Antoine Bernier and the tale of a young man yearning for his freedom. The film is nominated for Best Live Action Short Film at the 96th Academy Awards. After winning Best Live Action Short Film at Chicago Children's Film Festival in 2022 and Rendezvous Quebec Cinema in 2023. And Vincent is kind enough to join me on the podcast to talk about the film. Vincent, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much. Hi. So first off, congratulations on your nomination and for putting together such an impactful film. What was your first reaction upon hearing the news that you were nominated for an Oscar? Uh, and I, I think I'm honest, even today, I'm still on, on, a, on a cloud, to be honest. It's been, uh, I don't know if you've seen the video reaction that we posted online, but yeah. it is very a good uh, representation of how I still feel today. Even that reaction probably is like 15 seconds, but the real, real video would probably last 30 minutes. It was a very <laughs> long moment of of screaming and and crying and uh, uh, hugging each other. I think you know it's we did this film with um, I did I, I started to work on this film after university. It's my first narrative short film. We did it with you know people that I loved or can call family now. So it's kind of like. Mm -hmm. The idea of like just being at the Oscars is totally surreal. It's just totally surreal. Sure. Now, where did the idea for making this film come from? I know it's based on an actual person, but was this a story that you knew of personally before making the film or something that you heard about and decided you wanted to learn more? No, no, it, it is uh, based on a true story, uh, that of my childhood friend, um, Marc-Antoine, um, from Montreal. So he passed away at the age of 14 years old. Um, I was the same age when this happened. So you can imagine that at that young age, it's very hard to understand what happened, uh, what really happened. It was, there was a lot of noise around that story. You know, it, 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 it took a lot of attention from the media because a lot of confusion, the word at that time that it was that it was an accident. Um, and so many years ago, I think like four, uh, no, sorry, uh, five or six years ago, um, I, you know, that I, that story is still very, very close to my heart. And, 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 mm -hmm. and I felt there was some, a lot of unanswered question. So I decided to meet with his family that I knew and, and with his friends as well. And one of the first thing that is that told me was that in his opinion, it could have been, you know, it wasn't, he wasn't sure, but it could have been um, a suicide more than an accident. And then, you know, when he told me that it was very kind of a big realization of, okay, there's many things I don't know about that friend. And so I started to do a lot of research, um, met, uh, you know, with mental health professional, people working at juvenile center, but also again, his family and friend, people who knew him. And I gathered all of this information and through that research, I first, I started to get closer to my friend. I started to get to know him better, but I, I also, you know, this idea of doing a film about him, um, about the 48 hours before he passed away, start to kind of build and, 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 you know, make sense in my head. I, I came, you know, I was studying filmmaking, uh, at first at university. Uh, uh, and so, you know, when I graduated, I knew that the film that I needed to do next was something that has to be personal. And that project was definitely the most personal thing that was, that was inside of me for, for a long time. Sure. Sure. Well, again, so sorry to hear about your friend, but uh, so glad that you got to tell his story in this, this wonderful film. Um, and and sure. speaking of Mark, I, I thought the young man that you got to play him was, was wonderful in the film. Um, and obviously you had several other young actors in the film. There was the, you know, the young girl playing his sister and the other kids mm. at the, the juvenile center where Mark stays. Uh, mm -hmm. What sort of challenges did you face working with a primarily young cast like that? Mm. Um, I, I, you know, I, even if that was my first narrative film, I, I did project before, which was like art films, music video and so on. And, and so I did work a lot with teenager and, and kids. Um, 
and 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 for me every time i work with with them i usually always tend to go towards non-actors because uh the way they were expressing emotion the way they um you know the way they were playing from the camera the, the camera was always very honest and true Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, that was, I wanted to bring that process into that film, and so I did. We did a lot of casting with you know in schools and and uh, you know just open casting to to everybody that were actors or non actors. And in the end, almost all the people in the film are non actors. Uh, you know the teenager and kids are non actors right. ex except for the sister. But the sister is like uh, I actually did a cancer research society um, film uh with her before like um um you know many years ago and so i knew her and 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 weirdly enough um she did also have, had a very physical resemblance to the real sister and so i i knew i wanted to work with her at like even from the first line of the script but then yeah. the rest of the casting was like you know a lot of a lot of you know weeks and weeks of, of looking for the good people and then so I, I think we were two months in after i met leo kim the main actor um and i as soon as he entered the the um uh, you know audition room he was phenomenal honestly in his own way i think he could really relate to the real story he could understand mm -hmm. part of it and i think he also had um, he had, he had, he was very close to his emotion. And for me at that age, he, had, he was 15 at the time at that age, that's very, um, rare and, 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 you know, I, we, we, we had to work with him. We knew we had to work sure. with him because we would have never find someone like him otherwise. And so, so we worked together for almost two months and I worked also with the other rest, the, the rest of the cast for two months. I would say a little bit less than that for with them, but with with the main actor was like, yeah, I was seeing each other every week and and working on the script together and 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 building also a strong collaboration because it was my first film, it was his first film, so you know we we were doing this together and that was like you know he's coming to the Oscars and and for me it's kind of like this oh, is that's, that's gonna be is, awesome. Yeah, everything is so meaningful when you do you do this the right way. And I felt we, we felt like we did this the right way. For sure, for sure. And now I wanted to touch briefly on the sound design. It was one of the things that I, I noticed in the film. There's several moments Thank you. where what we hear as the audience is the same as what Mark is hearing. Uh, there's early on, he's listening to headphones. He takes them off and, and the music kind of disappears. There's also one scene where he's under the water and all the sounds are very muffled as as you would if you were you would hear underwater um yeah so what were what were some of the you know decision points in in doing that and trying to get us the audience in that that mindset of mark in those scenes and throughout the film uh, thank you for no noticing that at first and and um i think yes i it's a it's a very strange way the way we approach visually and sound wise this film because we want it to be as close as possible to him and to see the world through his lens. Um, but at the same time, we also wanted the, the, the camera and the sound to be an outside point of view. And so it was like always working on that very thin line of like, we we can understand what he feels, but we always all, we also always feel a little bit far away from his from from right. his brain, from what he's really going through inside. Um, and and there was many ways of doing that, but yes, the sound was definitely a very powerful tool to use um and you know yes you're talking about a, a lot about you know this the the use of the sound for example with the uh when he's listening to the music but there's also the use of the silence that we did carry a lot in the film and it's actually right. strange when you when you watch the film on a big screen uh and uh, the film uh, theater you compare to other short film it's usually there's a lot of silence so you can hear people in the room and the reason why we wanted that was that that's how you know for him silence was very important but silence is also uh means sometimes lack of air lack of lack of 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 breeze and of uh of uh you know sometimes suffocation and 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 so mm -hmm. There was a mix of, you know, we did work a lot with that, like when he enters his bedroom for the first time uh, after he enters the juvenile center and we close the door and for a moment, there is no sound at all in the room. And it's kind of like, right. it feels like we kind of close the, 
uh, uh you, you know like a, a door of a submarine and it's kind of we we you know so so we did work a lot with these little details so when he's inside juvenile center it feels much more silence and and when he's outside we have a lot of wind a lot of a lot of like bird i mean very far away birds insect and and so on so there's kind of like this relationship with outside and inside of we've been working also a lot with the sound yeah that's excellent. Excellent. Love to see all those little details in there that, that really make it come together. Thank you. Uh, now, you mentioned uh, a moment ago uh, you worked on uh, some music videos and some other uh, you know short films in your university time. Um, what is it that you like about the format of a shorter film, be it a music video or just a, a short narrative film? Mm. What I like about, I mean, all the projects that I did before were my way in into that short film so it was like i did a lot of short film and and art films dance film and so on it was like always to with the idea that one day i will direct this film this short film and trying to be on set and trying to learn like to um to know a bit better my voice as a filmmaker to try to um um yeah so 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 i did a lot of this project always by again yeah trying to find my voice and 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 also trying to be on set and working with people and i feel that for me the medium of like music video and short films is an art film is always you know i think it's like can you tell that story in a very short amount of time and and for me like the the the, the invincible will have never been a feature it was even if it's a you know 30 minutes it's always been a short film because I wanted people to really understand his story in a short film. I don't know if that's right. that's I don't know if that's a good reason enough, but it was always what I had in mind. And I feel that short films, it's it's not a way in into feature film. It's a medium itself, and it's a way to to uh, it's a way to tell a story that is so much different than a feature. And yeah, yeah, I certainly think there's there's times when it needs to be short and it needs to have that little punch. Yeah, uh, you know, like yours does for sure. Now, um, I have some questions that I want to get to that are not specifically related to the film, but is there anything else you want us to know about Invincible before we move on? Um, no, no, honestly, it's been, you know, I think, I think like one thing that I, for me, means so much about the Oscars and I'm so happy that this is happening is that we get to screen the film on a more worldwide platform, like a lot of more people around the world get to see the film and i'm i'm just really touched and honored by that because i feel you know originally i thought i was doing a very personal film about a very personal story but then eventually as as much you know during the festival and right now even more right now i get to understand that this is a much more universal story you know people can relate to that and i think you know the subject of mental health have been bring bring a lot during the festival circuit and right now but originally i was making a film about a, a friend who was struggling was fighting something inside it mental health was i knew we, there was something to do with him but i wasn't it wasn't necessarily my goal to say this is a film about this is a film about mental health and right now more than ever i understand that this is a film that talks about mental health that this is an important subject and right. and i understand that even more since i got beautiful um feedbacks not feedbacks but um like people coming to me with their own stories and their own relationship with mental health and can relate to his story and for me like i want to thank you first for just doing a podcast and talking about the film and and i and for like i feel that's the most beautiful part about you know this whole uh you know oscar campaign that's uh, it's it's uh, it's very moving Fantastic. Well, um, I know you, speaking of the Oscars again, you recently attended the Oscar nominee luncheon. Um, I think it was last week or the week before. What was mm -hmm. that uh, experience like? And did you get to meet and talk to anyone, uh, any of the, the, the big names there while you were hanging out? Yes, I did. I did. I, I you know, I'm, I'm not a big, like, I, I'm quite shy in this situation. And so I really want, I had some people in mind that I really wanted to talk to. Uh, but I, it was mainly because I really appreciate their, their work. And one was, Celine Song, who did Past Lives, which I have a very, very, you know, I think that's my favorite film of the year. Um, there was, um, 
um, as, as, as Steven Spielberg, of course, like he, he, you know, I took a selfie with him and it was a very funny moment. We also got to talk about filming in Quebec and, and stuff like that. And, and Mark Ruffalo as well. And so, you know, I, I got to meet a lot of people I truly admire. I, I would say that one that I didn't get to meet and I look forward to meet hopefully in the future is uh, Justine Tri uh, Triette, who did Anatomy of a Fall, which is like, again, on a same level of past life, like one of my favorite films yeah. of the year. So I, I look forward to meet her. And yeah, I would say, uh, but that was a phenomenal, fantastic day. And I'm uh, really happy I got to live that. That that's, uh, sounds like a, a really good time. Now, um, I'm going to move on to what could be my hardest question. Um, if you could only pick your top three films, what would you say those top three films are? Mm. <laughs> um, so I'm, you know, I'm from Quebec and I have a lot of uh, love from film from Quebec. So I would say two of them would be from there, which is, but maybe you know them. It's Incendie from Denis Villeneuve, which is, is kind of like his big film that put him a little bit, he was Oscar nominated with this feature film, but it's like an amazing feature film that definitely will stuck with me for the rest of my life. There's also Crazy um short uh, a feature film by Jean Marc Vallée uh was amazing you know film happening in Quebec and then the, the, the mm -hmm. third one the third one man what would that be I would say like if I'm more talking about something more uh rec like re recent and like something that really like mm -hmm. took me by oh yeah no sorry I would say it's Lost in Translation that was like Lost in Translation by okay. Sofia Coppola is like my big my big like uh, crush from you know since i'm very very young and so i i love that film and not very very young but I, for a few years i've been just like constantly watching this film so yeah and it's starting to That's rain here film. like it's uh, i don't know if you hear the rain but uh, uh <laughs> nope, I, I can't hear the rain no okay good um so those are good good uh, good choices there uh moving on to a little bit of a fun question kind of in the same vein though if you could invite any three movie characters to your next dinner party who would they be and why yeah <laughs> that's a question i really don't know what to answer um i would say it will be amelie from the film amelie amelie poulain I, I don't know if you know that film but it's a fantastic okay, film yeah. and, and i i definitely love that character and she's you know I just love to have a conversation with her at dinner. Can I, you know, I can I stick with oh, Harry Potter? Yeah, Harry Potter would be fun to have over dinner. <laughs> I love Harry Potter. I'm a big fan of Harry Potter, so I would go with Harry Potter. And yep. And then and then that would be a good match, right? Like with Harry and 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 Emily at at my place. And then who else would I invite? Um, I would say, oh uh, man, I don't know. I don't know. I can I stay with two? Can I stay with two? Is that sure, okay? You can stick with two. Answer? Okay, thank you. That, that's fine. That's it'll, a, it'll be nice, a hard... uh, nice intimate three-person dinner with the three of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a hard question because, like, you know, a lot, I feel a lot of my film are, you know, drama and sometimes tra tragedy, and and it's like you don't want to have these people over for dinner. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's not so fun. Right. It's, it's it's it can be quite dramatic. <laughs> sure, you want someone who's going to be uh, entertaining to talk to and not bring the whole party down. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so now, one last question is: I interview a lot of authors on my podcast as well. Um, are there any books that you've been reading lately that you can recommend? Could be fiction or nonfiction, and don't necessarily have to have anything to do with movies. Yeah. So I was, I was this film, this book here again. I'm sorry, this is in French, uh, but uh, this is Les Villes de Papier, which is by Dominique Portier, and she's one of the greatest writer of our time, uh, especially uh, you know where when we're from Quebec, this is an amazing film about, and, and this author is very special because she used to write about the world and in a very specific and special way, but then she's also someone who never got out of her place. And so it was like, she was living at her, you know, she was very kind of, nobody really knew her and nobody really saw her. And so it's kind of like this very weird dynamic that she had with the world when she didn't really maybe know the world maybe that made made her a better author so i i feel that's a, that's the film i'm that's sorry that's the book i'm reading at the moment i can't say too much about it because i just started but uh i i i do you know i i'm i do uh really excited to like know more about that story 
Excellent. Be sure to uh, link to that for folks who want to check that out. And uh, lastly, before we wrap things up, I know you're in the final push to get as many of those Oscar votes as we can, but um, if you have any uh, words of what might be next for you and also where can people follow you on social media to keep tabs on the Oscar uh, push and uh, whatever's going on next, your next projects. Yeah. Um, so I've been working on a feature film for a year now, I'd say, so I've been writing it and it's been, um, you know, I stop and go like I I I feel I'm not doing only that because of, of the short film festival and everything but I I it's definitely a project that keeps me up at night I'm very very excited to um to I, I'm actually excited to like that yet when the Oscar is going to be done I can go through that work right on that film and work on that film and 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 approach producers and everything and and so on so that's the next project I'm doing at the moment and um you know, if people want to uh, follow me on, on social media, it's it's uh, my full name. So Vincent René Lorty on Instagram or Invincible Short Film on Instagram as well. So these are the two. Um, I don't really use X or, you know, um, all Twitter or, or TikTok or, or anything like that. So I would say that's only where if you if you want to find me, that's there. Excellent. Well, we'll put links to those uh, those two accounts on from on Instagram as well. Thank well, Vincent, so thank you. Yep. Thank you so much for the time today. Really enjoyed speaking with you. And of course, best of luck with the Oscars in a few weeks. I really appreciate um, this conversation. Thank you for taking the time to do this. And, and I wish you a, a good rest of the day. Thank you again to my guest today, Vincent René Lorty. His short film, Invincible, is available to stream on Vimeo and is nominated for Best Live Action Short Film at the 96th Academy Awards. The Oscar Project Podcast is written and produced by me, Jonathan Etreberg, with editing assistance from Joshua Etreberg. Please join me next time when I will give my 2024 Oscars preview. Until then, I hope to see you at the movies.